Hey everybody, Nick here, and this morning I got a review for you of this little guy. This is the Wii Knives number 605. The Wii is a Chinese brand, um, and they're one of the new kind of generation of Chinese knife makers that are really trying to target the high end. They're creating well-machined, well-designed, and really unique pieces um, while still doing all of it in China to use, take advantage of lower labor rates and things like that. So um, that's an interesting thing, and this is the first time I've had a chance to uh, review a Wii on the channel, although I handle a couple previously at the Blade HQ. Um, first off, I want to thank my buddies Frankie and Bud for sending this guy along. Uh, they're over at the Birdshot IV channel. Check them out. They're entertaining. And, uh, yeah, but thanks very much for sending this along. And a uh, quick size comparison here. This is not a huge knife. Um, so here is your Spyderco Dragonfly, uh, your Spyderco Titanium and Damascus Delica, on loan from my buddy in at Tekken Tools. Um, here is another weird Choily knife, the Spyderco Ouroboros. Uh, Chris Reeves, Small Sabenza 21. Uh, Ontario Rat number 2. And Ontario Rat number 1. And you can see here that blade-wise, we're in about the same territory as the Rat number 2. So, um, there you go. Let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this particular pocket knife. So on the good side, first off, the size is not very huge, and I appreciate that very much. It's very often the case that high-end knives tend to be huge, and this guy really isn't. It fits nicely in my smaller hands. It comes in under the legal line in a lot of places, which is good, and, you know, I, I just I appreciate people taking the effort to do really impressive things on smaller knives. So there you go. Great. Um... Next little thing that's kind of nice is the clip on this guy. This is a milled clip. It's sculpted, but as you can see here, it's pretty thin, and there's a fair amount of spring to it. Um, very often, milled clips kind of suck. Uh, they're too firm. They, they don't have enough bend to them, but this really doesn't. Um, and, you know, it's nice, and it's got some billboarding on it, but honestly, it's, it's pretty tasteful, all told. I like the Wee Knives logo. So, you know, there you go. Can't argue with that. Blade on this guy has got an interesting two-tone sort of affair. This part is a black DLC. This part is silver. And I've come to realize that I like this even if I don't like DLC. Um, maybe not something I'd do for myself, but it's a very nice aesthetic effect. And the blade itself has got a sort of a mirror-y finish on it, although it's not mirror polished exactly. Um, that's nice. It's got an interesting swedge to it. You can see that it's not entirely sharpened on the top there, but it does have a nice swedge pattern to it. And the blade steel here is S35VN, which as you guys know is one of my very favorite steels, so it's good to go. No problems there. This knife also has a really good finger choil on it, uh, which doubles as a really good sharpening choil. Um, and you can see here, the knife is a little bit thickish behind the edge, but it's it's not so bad. And the choil makes it a little bit easier to sharpen. Can't argue with that. The ergonomics on this guy are pretty interesting. Um, they're not perfect in that the clip is a little bit of a hot spot, and even in my hands, it's maybe a little bit funky here and there. But it's absolutely not going anywhere in the hand. When you have this guy in your hand, it's really locked in well on a couple of different dimensions. So, you know, it is a knife that's just not going anywhere as, you as you're cutting with it. And I appreciate that at some level. Um, I gotta give props for the logo that Wee Knives is using. Um, it's very, very simple, but it's very, very nice. And I, I like it very much. Every time I see it, it's just like, well done. Um, so that's nice. It's subtle. It's not tactical. It's not really anything. It's just, it's, it's nice. I like it a lot. The texture on this knife is very nice as well. Um, hopefully I can show this off here, but it's actually got a very subtle ribbing to it gonna hear it as you drag your finger across it um and it's nice and grippy in the hand but it's not terribly abrasive i feel like although this has some texture to it it's not gonna eat at anything in my pocket in the same way that a, a more abrasive sort of texturing might um so i like very much this choice of texturing it's also very consistently done and it's it's nicely machined so i can't argue with that um the deploying action on this knife is very nice the detent on it is just great um it fires reliably 100 percent of the time and it fires pretty odd when you use the flipper tab you can't really argue with that and um it's just that's a sign that they gave a damn and that they're using good tolerances and then finally just speaking of good tolerances the machining overall is really excellent here um in that this texture like i said is really nice it's got some very nice interior milling which helps to knock the weight down a little bit although it's still not exactly a lightweight knife um 
It's got that nice milled clip. It's got a very nice pivot. And, and the machining on the pivot here is just gorgeous. And honestly, the, um, you know, the whole thing is just, it's nicely done. Um, there's actually, this looks like an integral knife, but it's not. You can see there that there's a little tiny seam, but it's a seam you can barely feel, uh, feel and that's that's impressive. It's held together by these two screws in the back there. So um, that's, that, that's cool. I like the machining very much. So that's the good. It's a smaller knife. It's got a very nice clip to it. The two-tone blade is nice with a good steel. The finger choil makes for interesting and good ergonomics overall, although not perfect. I love the logo. I love the texture. The deploying action is really good, and the machining, on the whole, is damn nice. Let's move on. What's really great about this knife is that it is just absolutely unique. It's got an interesting shape, an interesting color. Um, it's this weird, damn near an integral sort of construction. And the, the harpoon on the blade here, this little part jumping up here, is interesting, different, and unique. Overall, it's an interesting and very, very unusual knife. There's nothing really out there that looks exactly like this little guy. Um, and so I got to appreciate that very much. Uh, some of the, like Reich is similarly doing a lot of really unique stuff. We This is a, a knife with its own style. It's marching to the beat of its own drum. And I appreciate that when so many of your higher end knives these days look so startlingly similar. So well done, we. I mean, you're taking a risk here, but I think it's working out. It's really kind of neat. So on the bad side, um, first off, a little nitpick, but the pocket clip ramp isn't very tall here. So combined with the uh, strong texture on the handle here, this can be a little bit hard to get into and out of the pants. Not a big deal, but you know, there you go. Next issue that I've got with this knife is that the opening hole on it isn't terribly useful. Uh, with the thumb, I am just unable uh, to use it and I can almost do an index finger flick with it, but it's really, there we go. Basically, the opening hole is either an afterthought or a sad joke. Um, and the fact that they then extend the opening hole by adding a little bit of a crud groove here, which basically will just serve to mix whatever you were cutting yesterday with whatever you're cutting today, I just don't love the opening hole here. Certainly, it's making it look a little bit more unique and different and interesting, but I just, I kind of wish they'd done without there and maybe raise the height of the plunge grind a little bit. I don't know. Um, so I don't see why that needs to be there. Um, and it's worth noting that you don't even need it to open the knife two-handed if you want to. You can do that there. And with an action this good on the flipper, just don't see the need. Um, next thing I'm not seeing the, the need for is the, um, the blade thickness. This is a very thick blade. Um, you know, compared to, say, uh... Oh, your Spyderco Delica, which is uh, in the same size range, roughly, in terms of blade length. The thickness on the blade is way bigger. And combined with this saberish sort of grind, that makes this guy not the world's gift of slicing. Um, it's okay, but it's also not super stellar. Um, and it's also pretty thick right behind the edge, so I, I do wish that they'd ground this little, uh, this little guy a little better for slicing and use the slightly thinner blade. Because that also would have allowed the knife itself to be a little less chubby. This is a thick knife. I mean, 100%. It's way thicker than, say, your rat number two. It's frankly thicker than your rat number one, which is impressive. This is a fairly thick knife in the pocket. Um, you know, it's, it's thicker than the, uh, there's a Ferrum Forge Archbishop. I mean, this is a thick, thick knife. Absolutely so. And so, I kind of wish it wasn't. Um, you really do feel this guy in the pocket, coupled with the fact that it's not heavy, it's just dense. Four ounces ain't so bad. So, yeah, it's just, the whole thing's a little bit thicker than it needs to be, in my opinion. Next issue for me is that the anodizations don't quite match each other anywhere. Um, because, you know, the clip is one color. This is another color, the purple in here. The body is a third color entirely, and the pivot is a fourth color, and then these screws roughly match each other, but they're not roughly matching anything else on there. So, as a result, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's something to be said for a little bit of diversity, but given that none of these parts match each other, it feels a little bit like, eh, it's purple. That'll do. And I don't know, I, it, it offends my color-related OCD very, very slightly. And the color, you know, I like an interestingly colored knife. That doesn't bother me. Um, the Reich 
Oh, I don't remember the model number, but the right that looked like a Decepticon. That guy, they all do, I guess. But anyways, um, you know, it was pink, and I'm cool with pink. I got no problem with a purple knife in principle, but the way it's done here almost makes this knife look plasticky or toy-like. I mean, this is titanium. This is, in many ways, a, a serious cutting tool. But the way that they've done the endization here and the texturing makes this look like Fisher Price, baby's first pocket knife, uh, which it sure isn't. But I don't know, that that bugs me a little bit. I, I, I wish that they had done a more consistent job and left a little bit more of the metallicity of it to make it feel that way. I don't know. Just, that's just me, I guess. The price on this guy is a little bit on the higher side. Um, you're looking at 285 bucks, which is a lot of money. Let's be real here. That's Sleesh Bowie money very easily. Um, that, that's, 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 that's pricey. And, you know, there's a lot of good machining here, and I am impressed with it as a technically constructed object, but whether what they've got going on here adds up to 285 bucks, I'm not 100% sure. And especially given that it's made in China, that you're going to have warranty issues, um, potentially, and I, I just, I don't love that price. I feel like for what they're offering here, they need to be coming in a little bit lower. Then finally, the issue that I'm having on the, the closing side is that the knife is just not terribly smooth. I mean, you can make it close shut, and I've done my best here, but it's just, it's not a drop shut knife in any particular way, and frankly, it's not even all that smooth. There's a fair amount of grit going on in there. Um, that's with the loop detent ball path. So, uh, you know, that's that bugs me a little bit. The thing is, that might be a maintenance issue. It may just be that this knife really needs some lubrication in the bearings. The thing is, I don't know, because let's talk about the ugly. The ugly here, rather obviously to anybody who watches my channel, is that they're using stupid proprietary screws. And don't get me wrong, proprietary screws are never a good thing, but these are particularly stupid. And I'm sorry, Wee, I just gotta tell it like it is, because using little beveled stars with a little bit of doming on the top of them means that the area exposed to the most torque is also the weakest and the thinnest. So they're really prone to stripping, and then the extra rounding they did on top of it makes it hard for the tool to get purchase, which makes them even more prone to stripping, and even less talky. Now, to Wee's credit, they know that this is a problem. On the Instagram, they said that they are planning to start shipping knives with regular screws in the future. Clearly, they, they have figured out that they made a big mistake here, but it, uh, it's not a mistake. I mean, they look kind of cool, but oh my god, is it a bad idea, functionally speaking. To their credit, they do include a tool uh, with every knife, which is a nice thing. However, the tool that I have here, and given it might have been used by Frankie and Bird before, so maybe I wasn't the first person using this, but whatever it is, the tool stripped out as I was trying to take this guy apart uh, on this second screw right here, and so I had to call the disassembly because of that. Um, and again, to their credit, they had a U.S. distributor offering to send me a second tool pretty quickly after that, but... I. This is a preventable problem. If they'd been using good screws, regular screws, or even weird screws that work with Torx or Allen or any of the other 50,000 decent standards out there, we wouldn't have this problem at all. So um, this it's just a definition of a preventable problem. This knife will be way better when they start making it with regular screws because you won't have to dick around with any of this, and it'll just be a much better functional solution and they can still be pretty. So um, that's the ugly, is that you've got these proprietary screws, and the bad, as you recall, was the, the pocket clip being a little bit troublesome, the opening hole not being worthwhile. The blade itself is too chubby, and the knife itself is pretty chubby. The anodization doesn't really match with anything else, so it gets a little toy-like. The price is up there, and the smoothness ain't so great. But again, not quite sure if it's a disassembly thing. We'll see. But, uh, actually, no, we won't, because I can't take the thing apart. Ah, all right, not that I'm bitter. Let's go to the final conclusions, though. Look, there is a lot of good here. It's got a really unique design. It's well-made. It's nice in the hand. Uh, and Wee Knives is showing a lot of skill in what they're doing here. Their machining is really excellent. They're getting a lot of these things right, and they're creating something that's absolutely unique. They're not just making another damn titanium slab-sided mid-tech. There's also some unfortunate there that keeps this from being a gem. I mean, the fact that it's really chubby in the pocket, it's way, way chubby in the blade, and unfortunately they're, they're, they're using the wrong damn fasteners, that keeps it off the gem list for me. But there's still a lot of pretty compelling stuff going on here. And so if you love the design, and that's enough to justify the price, and you're willing to play the screw lottery, then by God, check it out. I mean, it's a lot of money, but it's not completely out of line. 
Uh, so I guess that's my final conclusion. It's not for me. I'm keeping an eye out on Wii in the future. And if you think this is for you, then hey, why not? Check it out. Uh, there you go. Hope this has been interesting. We, great job moving to the better fasteners. Coming up soon. Looking forward to that. And everybody else, have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of the day. It's time for me to go we, we, we all the way home. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Bye now.